Good evening. It is 11.42 p.m. It is way past my bedtime, but I have some updates regarding earlies. Uh, a lot of my students have received their earlies for most of the top 20 schools by now, and those who were accepted, congratulations. And those who are deferred and rejected, I just want to give that firm reminder that it's not game over. You got to keep pushing. You got to keep pumping. You got to hit the gym every day. Uh, just because you got rejected from one school doesn't mean you're Game is over for the rest of the schools. I've seen this every year for the last 16 years. I've seen students get rejected from Stanford, but then, but then get accepted to Harvard regular. So it happens, guys. It happens. But with that being said, um, I did want to point out some of the new data points for Harvard and Yale specifically. I know Stanford has come out, and uh, I just haven't found like a, a comprehensive article that that points out some of the data that I want to point to today, for at least for Harvard and Yale. So let's just jump into it. Harvard accepts 8.74% of early applicants. This article is going to be all about affirmative action and SCOTUS. They're going to talk about the racial breakdown and how that's not going to be determinable. They're not going to release that data until after May 1st, once everyone uh, submits their SIR or statement of intent to register. Uh, the thing that was really interesting to me personally was how many of the students were accepted for early versus how many of the students were uh, uh, rejected and how many of them were deferred. Granted, the acceptance rates for the class of 2025 right here was the lowest. It was 7.4%. So um, that was the lowest. They have 7.56 for class of 2027, which was last year. And then it was 7.87% for the class of 2026, which was two years ago. So 2028 is still really competitive. It's like one of the four lowest acceptance rates that you see this graph. Uh, but it's still, it's showing an upswing. It's, it was less competitive than the previous three years. Uh, with that being said, how many were deferred? This was really interesting to me of the total applications received approximately 83.06% were deferred. That's a massive amount that were deferred. So either there's just a ton of students who are super qualified that just really are going for Harvard and then they get deferred. Um, or they're kind of just holding their cards on a lot of students. It's really interesting. That's a significant amount. And you'll see what I mean when you compare that to Yale. Uh, only 7.7% .7 were denied. So the thought here is if you are afraid of rejection in terms of like Ivy League, you know, S tier, if you're wondering what I mean by S tier, go check out my uh, Counselor J college tier list. Um, if you're afraid of rejection, apply single choice early action or restrictive early action to Harvard because they don't reject a lot. Only 7.7% .7 rejected. In other words, guys, if you were rejected from Harvard, that's a hard, hard R. That's a hard R, and you should be checking out what's going on with your, your grades, your college expectations, your list, etc. But if you were deferred, it means also not a lot. It means like 83% were deferred. So that's, that's hard to kind of parse out and determine like whether you made the right choice or within range or not, because it's just so massive. And here's what I mean. Compare that to Yale. So Yale, let's go from the top here. Yale has an admit rate of 9.02%, which is the lowest of more in more than two decades. So it's, it's, it was the most competitive in, in, in 20 years. But if we scroll to the deferred, let's see, deferred. So here it is. The 9.02% acceptance rate is the lowest in over two decades. Of the remaining applicants in the pool of 7,856 total, 20% or 1,531 students were deferred to the regular decision pool. So compare that to over what? Harvard's 80%, 83%. Compared to 83% deferred from Harvard, only 20% were deferred from Yale. And what that tells me is, therefore, Yale's deferral pool must be much more selective or, or by some extreme measure. And I, I admit that there's a plausibility here that Harvard just accepts way more students or they have a way broader range of potential interest in students, whereas Yale has a much more narrow range, but 83%, right? 83%, 83.06% deferred from Harvard versus 20% from Yale. That's that's a massive difference. Whereas 70% or 5,537 students were denied admissions. 
and there's like this one percent it's negligible of those who withdraw their application that's there's really no reference there but 70 percent of them were rejected so if you applied to yale and you were rejected i honestly think that feels like it's giving you a better clarity of what you should expect than if you were deferred to Harvard. And what I mean by that is if you're deferred to Harvard, you might think that's a great sign, but to me, statistically, it means that you're still a part of like 83%. Whereas if you are deferred from Yale, you're part of 20%, which means there's, there's a greater selectivity there, generally speaking. So I thought that was really interesting. I wanted to point that out. For those who applied to Yale and you were rejected, 70% of students were. They must, they must have had a much higher kind of like cutoff scale for when it was for early students they're looking for. Whereas for Harvard, they clearly had a hard time denying students because 83% were deferred instead of denied. Only 7.7% were denied. Um, I just thought that was interesting. I wanted to point that out. I do know that uh, I posted a previous video about what to do when you get accepted to early. Uh, there's, I got to look for a article that properly explains what you should do if you're rejected or if you were deferred. Like rejected, essentially, my answer would be you should probably move on unless there was some egregious error with your transcript sending or et cetera. But uh, that's going beyond what I wanted to cover today. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching and... I hope that this was helpful. I'm trying to keep up to date with the news. I'm trying to get more shorts, by the way. I got a new editor. Pretty excited about that. Let's see if that works out. Anyways, it's past my bedtime. Good night.